All right, folks, welcome back. This is our commentary for February 7th, 2022. Quickly take a look at the dollar index. We have a small little gap in here, and we have one up here as well. So sell side liquidity and the buy side of balance, sell side of efficiency below this low and into this area here. That's where I'm keeping my focus. Might need to go up a little bit. I'd rather see it stay heavy and go lower right from Jump Street tomorrow, but it's kind of light on the news until later in the week. So just be mindful of that. I'm still bearish on dollar for the time being. Target here. Euro. Still looking for this sell side imbalance, buy side efficiency to be traded up into and above the buy side liquidity pool here. I'm watching to see if it wants to duck down below here for institutional order flow entry drill tomorrow or into Wednesday, then sending it up into here. Bitcoin, I just want to toss this in here because I am looking at just high here, 44,456 and today's high just fell short of it. Not by much, but uh, it took out the high. I was saying if it went above that high, then it, it would be bullish until we get into this area here. It's drawing right to that. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. Like I said, I don't know anything about this asset class, but if it was going to go lower, I would have looked for that low. But I just want to toss this in here for completeness sake. It is there. Um, I would have rather seen it not go for these highs here because at that point, it begs the question, did we just come down below here to take liquidity to send it higher and go for these relative equal highs here for the buy side liquidity? In my mind, this is what I'm entertaining. Going up here one more time to take out that short-term high, maybe get everybody thinking and frothing at the mouth that it's going higher and then aggressively sell off. That's what I would expect. If I was making the market for Bitcoin, that's what I would do. But anyway, just toss that in there for no extra charge. All right, so we're going to go over to the equity markets. Okay, and the teaching is going to be on days like we had today. All right, so we had traded from this high down to this low. Equilibrium is right here. So we went above into a premium market, and we're just hanging around near equilibrium. We have already traded down into this buy side of balance, sell side of efficiency here last week. Then we also went above equilibrium here, but didn't really quite get anywhere of any importance. That would have been a better area to go to and then sell off a little bit. I'm favoring the upside here, and I'm looking at it from this view like we went down took out sell side here with that run we rallied and we're consolidating back down into the imbalance here and if we get any kind of rallying this week i want to see this high taken out and again that little area right there if we break lower and go below this imbalance i'd like to see a trade back up to it as resistance and then look to sell off. Okay, so those are two of the parameters I'm looking for. It's not a pick one and whatever works out, I'm right. It's that's what I'm requiring from the marketplace because we're in the middle. We're in equilibrium. So I don't know. It's got an equal likelihood to go higher or lower from where we are right now. So you have to stay within a intraday day traders model. Let's go down to an hourly. Right, you see we had a really consolidated day here. Low, high, low, higher high, lower low, higher high, lower low. You know what that is, right? That's seek and destroy. So we had that today in the SP. And if we drop down into the five minute chart, I'm going to teach you a little bit more about the range that I'm not going to teach on the YouTube channel. So that way you guys can see the benefit of being here versus I'll just watch it on the YouTube channel. Just let you know, I've had a lot of entitlement-minded students come into this mentorship here over the years. Most recently, the worst has been the 2021 group. 
You know, I'm not trying to pick on you guys, but it is rather astonishing <laughs> to see the level of you owe it to me because you do. Well, no, I know this is the way I'm going to teach it. And this is how I promised I'd teach it. And you have to do the work to fill in those gaps. There's some really entitlement minded individuals who are on the YouTube. Some of their comments are like, like they know better. You know, and it's just crazy. Like, if you know better, then you don't need to watch my videos. Just go do what you got to do. All right. So what I'm showing you here is this is the hour lunch here. So we're going to shade that. That is no man's land. Okay. We don't want to do anything inside that hour. So just leave that alone. Now, from the 8.30 news embargo lifting to noon, that's your morning session. But now here's what I want you to do. I want you to start refining that to that. Okay, so 10 in the morning to noon. I'm going to show you something about it in a minute. Same thing here. You know, you can start trading as early as 1.30, but I want to take your attention to 2 o'clock to 4. Okay, if you look at that from a oh, perspective like this, don't try to trade here. Now there's going to be lots of setups that are going to be missed and you're going to probably want to send me hate mail. Uh, because I was following your instructions, I missed. <laughs> the idea is we're looking at it like this. Okay. This 10 o'clock in the morning, what that does is it, it avoids you getting caught up in the initial volatility that comes around at the opening price. As you can see, if you've been watching it and even in my videos where I'm showing the recordings of it, the morning session right at 930 New York time has a lot of volatility. And that initial volatility can be problematic if you don't know what you're doing. You can get caught off on the wrong side of the marketplace and do something and then watch it rip against you. And then it's it's pretty much to the graveyard with you for that day. If you don't know how to fix it, okay, or come out of drawdown. So here is 10 o'clock, okay? If you look, we have a high here. And right there. So what's above that buy side? We're in a range on the daily chart so it can go either way so how do you play that look for highs to be taken out and then pull down to the middle of the range create a low and then go back to the middle and then start looking to see how it's going to run for the next buy side or sell side liquidity pool buy sides taken here initially it trades lower trades below this low which we'll look at in lower time range but right away you can see we have a fair value gap there on a five minute chart so we're going to note that I didn't have time to do the slides today. My niece was playing volleyball and she caught an elbow to her face and now has a loose tooth. So I gotta help her take care of that today. I was a little disturbing. All right, so we have this fair value gap and then we have below this low, we have what? Sell side liquidity. Okay, so we can look at that. So I'm using the initial low immediately to the left of 10 o'clock hour here. Same way I'm teaching on the YouTube channel with the 8.30. Okay, so we're getting ready to take a big jump forward. But for now, just understand that this is what I'm not going to teach on YouTube. So if you're doing things on your own channel, please don't include this kind of stuff. Don't even put the annotations like this on your charts. I know I've encouraged you all to do your own little thing showing your journey but uh, if you start breaking your charts out like this you're technically teaching by default and I'll take odds with that but all right so if you look at the opening here 10 draw that out in time okay here's your opening price and we'll just thicken that up a little bit okay and we'll come back to this one in a moment but for now let's drop down into the three minute chart. I'm trying to go through this as quickly as I can, not spend too much time 
opening price goes down. Does it take up that low? No. Is there any trade there? Not yet. Then it rallies. Now we're trading above the opening price at 10 o'clock. And we're taking out the buy side liquidity above these relative equal highs. So the question is going to be is which high do you use? Well, it depends on how you're going to frame your model. Remember, there's so many ways to skin a cat. You can set it up like I've taught on the YouTube channel. There's nothing wrong with that. It's actually a very good model. But this is one I like personally. I like looking at it like this, where I take the highest volume hours of the day in the morning and in the afternoon. And if you start breaking your day out like this, you'll see that there are some really wonderful setups. And then there's other days where the market starts trending and you don't really get too many setups in them. It just, if you didn't get on board right away, you missed it. And that's going to be with anything. Okay. You're always going to miss moves. I miss moves. You're going to miss moves. And I have so many people in the comment section on the YouTube channel. They're all saying like, you know, which, which order block do you buy? Okay. Or which, which fair value gap are you looking for in which high, which high are you looking for it to run? You know, what's the daily bias? How do I know what's the daily bias for every day? You hear the tone in their questions. What they're asking is, is teach me how to be perfect. And those individuals that ask questions like that are basically telling me as an educator and that's been doing this for a long time, they are never going to get it. They're never going to get it. And just like students in this mentorship that are looking for the magic bullet, the one that fixes everything, there's a gray area, folks. There's this gray area that everything I teach, there's still going to be this small little residual area where risk is going to always be there. Doing it wrong is going to be a potential outcome. And you're trying to avoid that. You can't. You can't avoid it. That's the reason why you have to have stop losses. That's why you have to. Imperfect results are still amazing. But anyway. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing a definite run on the buy side. But by itself, when it goes up there, it's nothing. But then look what we have here. We have a short term low. Right there. Swing low. And then displacement. Look at that. Beautiful just like I teach it. <laughs> so we have a civvy here, okay? Now with that, if you noticed, I haven't been teaching institutional order flow entry drill. I'm just using the idea of institutional order flow entry drill for the fair value gap, which they're not, but I'm using the term interchangeably. And that may have been causing confusion for some of you on here because you hear me say fair value gap on the YouTube channel. When I'm teaching how to enter it, like institutional order flow. And it's just a way for me to teach them the easiest entry technique where I'm not getting thousands of requests in an email, which I don't respond to their emails. Like I just don't have time. It's like, I can't keep up with all of yours, but the comments in the videos, I'm skimming through them because they're real short. Well, I mean, be honest, there's a few of them that like to write books. <laughs> you think I'm wordy. The comments are useful to me because some of you are in there as well. You know, some of you are, students and you're showing your adoration for what I'm doing and how it's actually helping you too. And that's good. That's the right mindset. But the idea is what are you looking for specifically? Are you looking for a trade every single day? Because if you're trying to do that, you're setting yourself up for expectations that will not be met. Now you'll get a trade every day if you want to look for one, but a high, probably high quality setup isn't always every single day. Okay. It's not always there. Now, referring to the morning session, if the morning session is kind of sloppy, the afternoon can sometimes clean up and get a little more refined and you can pick out what it wants to look for, which I'll kind of teach in a minute. But if you look at the opening price here, we're seeing basically the power of three. So we have open, it runs above, takes out relative equal highs. Breaks down short term market structure shift there, fair value gap trades up into it, and last candle, pair shorter block, sell it. Starts to break down a little bit, comes right back up. What's it doing here? Fair value gap. They're not going to see this, okay? You're learning it here because this is institutional order flow. Fills in that, sells off. This one here breaks this low and this low. And now we have new lower lows post or after 10 o'clock in the morning's hour demarker with sell side below there. So how far can this go below this low? What's the most energetic run here? And it starts breaking down. So this low 
to that high, that's your range. Grab your fib, anchor to the highest, to that low right there, and you have a standard deviation of negative one here at 44.80 and a quarter. The low on that comes in at 44.80 even. And then one and a half standard deviation because you still have time. It still has time until we get to noon. The one and a half negative standard deviation, you have 44.75 and a quarter. And the low on this candle comes in at 44.75 and a quarter. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. You can't get any better than that. It's just the way it is. Now, when I do this kind of stuff, it programs you. I'm going to be perfect. No, you're not. Because if you would have got out down here at that low, there's nothing wrong with that. But then you would have complained to yourself. Oh, but I would have seen it. No, forget all that. Okay, stop thinking like that. These are best case scenarios. And it starts to run down ahead of the noon hour. What time is this? 11.42. It's about time for this thing to start consolidating going into lunch. And then it gets ugly and sloppy. It makes one more lower low in here, which many of you in here will be mad because if you would have got out here or got out here, you didn't get that. Like I mentioned throughout this mentorship, some of you are going to end up having a better exit strategy than me. And that's okay. In fact, that's probably a wonderful thing. I would love to see what you come up with. But the point is, imperfection is what you should expect. But now look what's going on. You have here the opening price, rally up, which is protraction, the Judas swing. And then it breaks down into a swing low. So we have intraday market structure shift, bearish order block right here, and fair value gap in the form of a SIBI and it sells off, retraces back to, what's this candle's low right here? 45 even and three quarters. The high of this candle comes in at 45 even and three quarters. 45 even and three quarters. Both of these candles are the same high as that candle's low. Can you get any better than that? No, that's perfect. Black box systems, harmonic that, supply and demand, <laughs> you know the rant. None of that can come close to this. Nothing comes close to this. This is the market. So if there's any doubt whether or not these markets are running on an algorithm, let your mind be at rest, because it is. All right, so it runs down, creates the low here, then consolidates. Then we go into the time of day where we don't really want to do anything, and then we set up our expectations for the afternoon. So let's go back up to a five-minute chart. Okay, and here it is at uh, two o'clock. Market's coming out of a consolidation. So at that moment here at two o'clock, go to the left, where's our highs? We have this high here, which isn't much higher than what we got here. So to me, that's not enough of a move to reach for anything of in any importance. So what am I doing here? I'm teaching you how to look at old highs and say, okay, that, I'm gonna disqualify that one because it's essentially where we were for the lunch, extended lunch, but nonetheless, it's lunch, okay? I don't look at this and say, oh, I'm gonna find me a setup. I wanna go beyond that and see what is next. Well, we got that fair value gap here still. So it might be interesting to see that. We'll extend it out in time in a moment, but what's the high pr prior to that fair value gap here? So if we have that, and again, what was the profile expected for the day? On the daily chart, we're between buying and selling, okay? So we're trapped around equilibrium. So it can do what we're seeing today, seek and destroy. How do you know when seek and destroy is gonna come, Michael? When the market's sitting at equilibrium on the higher time frame charts. Hourly, no. Four hour, yeah. Daily, yes. Okay, rewind the video and listen to that again. So we have buy side above this high and we're trading above, running up intraday higher high relative to the morning session. So they run up, they hit the stops, and then it breaks lower. So we're gonna drop down in a lower time frame here. Three minute chart. Okay, so we have a swing low here. The market breaks below that. No fair value gap return, just keeps on trading lower. Breaks lower again, breaks lower again, and takes out the low formed in the morning session right over here that's the london or not the london that's the new york lunch low okay 
Now, if we go back inside all of this range here, we drop down into a two minute chart. Swing low broken, no fair value got traded back into until right there. See that? Now you know this as institutional order flow entry drill. The questions I'm getting on the YouTube channel is how do you know when it's going to fill the gap entirely or if you want to just do part of the gap? I'm not going to teach that. That's teaching mentorship you know, on a whole new level. I'm not doing that there. I'm giving them just enough to find consistency in a model that's easy. Some of them are trying to squeeze blood out of me, <laughs> and I'm not going to give it to them. But below this low, you know what that is. It's sell side liquidity. If we have a gap there, then we don't expect this to completely close in. We have what? Institutional order flow entry drill. This is the candle's high here. And if it trades to that high plus one, so the high is 44.99 and one quarter. So if it went to 44.99 and a half, that's a, that's a short. The next candle trades to 44.99 and a half. That's it. Fills it, sell off. Now, if you're looking at intraday charts like this, like a two minute, one minute chart, or even if you're below one minute, like in the 45 second, 15 second, five second, you know, 30 second type time frames, you can use a quarter of a point or a half of a handle. In other words, two ticks below this high as your limit and just allow that little bit of movement against you. And it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And you start studying this price action and these indices, you'll see it's, it's not that big of a deal of whether some of these little tiny little moves beyond where you're trying to get in at. You just don't want to be completely offside in your analysis and then ride out like a hundred, you know, handle. <laughs> That's not fun. But if you look at the setup here, it sells off and then you have another one in here, institutional order flow, interdrill, and then it sells off once more. This one here gets a little wild because we're at that time of day where I taught you that the algorithms are going to come in here and start spooling. And that's that. Let's go over to the one minute chart and look at that afternoon run here. You can see that fair value got right there. Nice drop off and a smaller one here. Nice fill there and then sells off. Now watch what happens when we go into the really low, low, low time frames. And there's some of you like, oh, I really don't like these time frames, ICT. Well, this is how you learn price action. Because all these things, all these things basically are viewed on the higher time frame charts as well. All right, this is a 30 second chart. Okay. So we have fair value gap right there. See that? There to there. Runs up into it, sells off. Fair value gap right here. Runs up into that, sells off. That's how I'm trading when I'm showing you the paper trades in this demo account here. All these moves here, they're all based on what I'm showing you right now. Okay, you don't need fraudulent things to do really good entries and trades that repeat over and over again. But this level here is that intraday high from the morning session. It runs up into it and it breaks the short term low here. Breaks below it. Start looking at your imbalances and you have one right here. Prior to this low here, which is on the higher time frame, one minute and five minute charts. Fair value gap there. And I think there was another one. Where was that one at? I lost my. Where am I looking at? Okay, here and here. Okay, so there's two setups right there, and it delivers like gangbusters. Now, we're going to look at this area here and look at it from a 15 second. Oh my goodness, I see getting ridiculous. All right, so let's make this a little bit easier to see. All right, so no fair value gap there. Low is 45, 11 and a quarter. High is 45, 11 and a quarter, so there's no gap there. Gap there, but didn't trade up into it. Small little gap there, trades up into that. Over just a little bit, that's okay. And we have fair value gap there, trades up into it, sells off. No gap here. There's one here. What's the high on that one? 
45, 0, 5, and 3 quarters. Same price on both of these. So it goes completely up to that one here and stops. So that's the definition of institutional overflow entry drill for the entry, not that this is one. But the idea is that it does that very thing. Use that high. That's how it teaches it to you. Whatever that candle's high, that's your entry for your limit. And you can see it did it two times here. And then you can, and then you have the fair value gap here and sells off. And one last one for five second chart, which is insane. But these setups can be further refined. Ugh, good grief. <laughs> Let me see if I can do this. All right, and with the five second chart, and it's a little spotty, admittedly, but you can still see it. Fair value gap, trades up into it here. Fair value gap, trades up into it here. Same candle high here. 45 by seven and a half, 45, seven and a half. Fair value gap, trades up into it here. Fair value gap, trades up into it here. So, and you have one here, trades up into it here. You have one there, it trades up into it there. And so then here, trades up in here. This is exactly what high frequency trading algorithms are doing. Look, look closely. You see how many times it's creating these gaps? Hits it, boom. The dance between these two algorithms. What did you say? Two algorithms. Yes, there's two algorithms. The algorithm that delivers price has absolutely no effect on how many people buy and sell and has nothing to do with that because it's completely controlled it's completely ai now the algorithms that the smart money traders are using they look for these imbalances and they hammer the market so what's happening is is you have these little gaps here when the market trades there boom the market starts hammering that hammering 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 putting in orders that go short same thing as it trades down here, it creates a little imbalance. When the price goes above this candle's high, they're hammering it with sell orders. They know it's not going to stay there long, so they're just going to try to get, a, get as many orders in as they can. Not all their orders get filled. There's a lot of missed orders. They don't get filled on everything, which is the reason why they're trying to do high frequency. So they're trying to get in real quick, boom, 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 hit these orders, and when it runs down, they're taking their little scalps, their little pieces, okay? And the way I'm teaching you, like if they're using this to get short, as soon as it gets this below this low, they're done. That's that's one macro. That's it. It's over for them. The trading algorithm. Now, your question is going to be is, okay, well, if these smart money traders know what you're teaching, why don't they just get in up here, sell short and write down? Some of them do. Others get in and they like to do these lots of transactions over and over and over again. And they're putting in lots of money to do that. Whereas if they put a trade on and they hold, that time risk is something that algorithmic traders don't like to submit to because they know high frequency trading like me. Like I don't like to hold on to positions like, like a swing trader. I just don't like it. It doesn't fit my personality. And the developer or coder of the algorithm that's being utilized for trading purposes, they may not have that same comfort that you as a swing trader or position trader may have. They don't want that. They know that they can have velocity behind their equity and start churning it faster by having more transactions and getting in and getting out, getting in and getting out. They take their money and run, surgical little strikes, okay? But they add up when it's hundreds and hundreds of them with big position sizes behind them. It's not like small positions. They're large positions being hammered into the marketplace. As much as the market will allow for before it runs away from their ideal entry or their limit area. But you can see there's so many trades here. This is how I'm running up those demo accounts. I'm looking at these types of trades and I'm looking for liquidity pools. And I'm going to ride these things out every single time I get a chance. If I can build up a position, say I can do, I don't know, say I put on, not that I can do it with uh, TD Ameritrade because the, the margin is so high, the requirement for it. I can only do one contract on NASDAQ. It's just, they just won't let me do it. And it's actually pretty expensive. It's like $21,000 to do one contract with NASDAQ. Now, I 
can relate to why they would want margin that high because some of the intraday volatility, you know, you can see thousands of dollars just with one contract making or losing real easy because it can do like two, three hundred handles in a short period of time. And if you are on the wrong side and you're trying to trade it with a little bit of money, like say you were given free access to a, a, a mini and you had five thousand dollars. OK, in one day, in one trade, you could literally get smoked and lose half or more of your account in one trade in minutes. That's one of the things I've been studying since the 21st of January. OK, I'm, I'm literally watching TD Ameritrade with TradingView and watching how prices matching up between the two feeds and, and platforms. And this market is fun. Like it's not, well, I'm looking at S and P right here, but obviously I'm referring to the Nasdaq. But uh, the the S and P requires me thirteen thousand to do one contract. So again, it, it these markets can be traded on a micro. So instead of fifty dollars per handle on the E mini S and P, you'd be making five dollars per handle. What would that be like? Say you're short from forty five zero five, and it went down to forty five zero four even. On a mini, it's fifty dollars profit if you were short. If you were doing a micro, it's five dollars. So it's it's not a lot of money, but look how much movement there is. I mean, that's probably the ideal scenario for you to be practicing with a a micro and trading that for a while and get used to you know finding setups and not fearing how much you're going to lose if you get it wrong. Just make it indifferent. Like the result's going to be of no consequence to you. So that way you balance the psychological impact of being in there with real money should you ever decide to do so uh, at least in demo trading you'll see that there's those fluctuations that even in a five dollar per handle it adds up you know it probably, you'll probably be just blown away really to see how much it gets to what you probably make at your job on a daily basis trading with just one micro i mean there's a lot of volatility in these markets and it's really fun but anyway so I broke that down for you on all of the lower time frame charts and showed you the importance of understanding what you're looking for. And let me get this there. All right, so this drop down here from the high, running the initial high of the day out. All right, so you have one standard deviation, negative standard deviation. One and a half standard deviation negative, and I'll have to add the second one. Let me see if I can. What was it? Negative one and a half. So it's two. I'm looking for. Yeah, two, and no, we're not going to get two and a half. But I'll just throw it on there just for completeness' sake. Okay. So didn't quite get there, but not bad for government work. All right. So they. Had a really, really nice sell off here in the afternoon session. I missed that. Real quick, let's just drop over to the NASDAQ. All right. And I'm just going to put the lines on. And I won't do all the other annotation. I'll leave that for your own. study and I'm just going to shade this area out here in the middle because I don't want you thinking anything about that area there all right so we have our New York lunch that I keep wanting to say London lunch <laughs> all right so Let's spread this out a little bit. Fair value gap after running what high? Look to the left. We have this high. And if you didn't want to use this one because we're, we're kind of like in close proximity, you can use this one. Extend it out in time. So what am I saying here? Look past. Okay, here's 10 o'clock. Go through. Here's one high. But we're already like above it before 10 o'clock. So 
Let's use one prior to that one. Why? Why would I want to do that? Because we've already traded above this one and broke back down. So at the beginning of the 10 o'clock hour, we're sitting here. That candle's starting here. So the next candle here, we're already below that. So it's useful, yes, I, I would refer to it, but I want to look at, well, what's the high prior to that one here? So extend that out in time. Fair value gap, and we're trading back above that short-term high here. So we are at what? Premium. We can also trust it because from this high down to that low, we're above 50 there as well. Look at the bodies respecting that. That's not random. Okay. So if we drop a fib from this leg here, Fourteen thousand five hundred sixty-two and three quarters. The low at lunch. Not that you'd be holding that long, but the low comes in at fourteen thousand five hundred fifty-five and a half. So just a little bit below that level there. Not bad. And let's drop into a three-hour chart. I'm sorry, three-minute chart. Okay. So we run up into. You can't see the fair value gap here on the three-minute chart, but it's there on the five. So this is the reason why I tell you to go top down from five. Four, if you want to, I don't usually use, I use five, three, two, one, but I'm teaching on the YouTube channel, I go through all of the time frames. but generally you're probably going to catch it on a three if it's in the four. So we have this price one here, we trace it back up into an old high, breaks down, and then watch this, see that? There's your gap, trades up into it, sells short, breaks lower, not so much of a gap in here, sells off institutional orpho entry drill there. And it sells off, and right before the lunch hour begins at noon, take your profits. So a nice little delivery on price there. On a three-minute chart, I'm sorry, on a two-minute chart, rather. Fair value gap there. Trades up into it perfectly. Now, remember what it looked like on the three-minute chart in here? It wasn't so small and you new. Know, well, smaller. And just goes above it just a little bit here and then sells off institutional or fine drill there why because there's lows here that sells high liquidity gap don't expect it to be completely filled boom sell it and same same scenario here i would have looked at that as a never fill it all the way up even though it was kind of like above the low so there's a little bit of a a knack or an experience thing but i still wouldn't expect it to completely close in and it didn't it only went to the candle here just by one What's it? One tick. The high comes in at fourteen thousand six fifty even, and yeah, it's it's just a quarter of a point or one tick. Another institutional inflow entry on sells off, and then finally, I'm not going to do that. And I'll leave that for your own study. On the one minute chart, nice little gap in here, refined right to that area here. Another fair value gap, see that? Trades up to it, sells off. Imbalance, trades to it, sells off. Institutional or drill, sells off. Okay, and I'm gonna shade in that area there, and we'll look at it on a 30 second. All right, so in here, let's zoom in a little bit. All right, you have an institutional orpho entry drill there. Why? Because the OLO, the gap is there. Trade up into it, there's your short. Trust the fact that it won't completely close in here. So where could your stop loss be? Right to the close of that candle, because you have to incorporate that entire candle's wick or tail, because it could get a consequent encroachment of that. So selling short here on this candle's high, stop at the close here. So look at the risk here. Close comes in at 14,759 and a half. So we'll just say 759. What I'm showing you is the last three numbers left to the left of the decimal point right here. Just watch these numbers here, okay? The close is 14,759 and a half. So when I say 759, I'm referring to that, okay? 14,000. We don't need to say that. It's still in the 15,000 range for the price. 
So if it shows a stop, I'm sorry, a close of that candle at 14,759 and a half, we can use that as our stop loss. So 759 and a half. Entering at the high is 747 and a half. So it's 12 handles. Okay, 12 handles of risk if you're going to enter on the high. So we're going to say we're entering at 747 and three quarters. And the high comes in at 748 and three quarters. So it goes one more full handle above where our limit is. So it's definitely filling us there. So let's take a look at this entry here. So you're getting in at 748 and 747 and three quarters. And in the low over here comes in at 15 and three quarters. So we're looking at 30 handles, a little bit more than 30 handles. Selling here, covering below here. See that? This is a swing. This is a swing traders entry. Now, what you're looking at is 30 seconds. Every candle is 30 seconds worth of data. The highest and the lowest value of each 30 second interval. For the folks that are in here saying, I need to see swing trading concepts. I need to see it. You're looking at it. I'm showing it to you on all the time frames. This is a 30 second chart. It's fractal. When I say price is fractal, the things I'm teaching you and the logic behind that is scalable. You can put it on the biggest time frame you want to trade all the way down to these time frames. This is like, it's not even a, it's not even a full minute. <laughs> it's below a minute and it's still there. Okay. When you take a step back and you really appreciate what's being taught to you, it gives you a universal approach to just simply make whatever model fits you perfectly. But it's going to take time to determine what is perfect comfort. Not perfect delivery and, and results, it's but perfect comfort where you are comfortable with it not being perfect in every day it's a winning trade, or that it gives you all the big wins and never any of the big losses. Like that's impractical. Like you can't expect that. But when you look at price delivery like this, it's hard to argue with me. Okay. It's in fact it's impossible. None of you have the argument to, to stand on when you say, you're not teaching swing trading. This is absolutely swing trading because if this was the daily chart, that's swing trading by all definitions of anybody else's view on the marketplace. But because I'm teaching you how to find this stuff on lower time frames, you're turned off to it because it's a time frame that you're not going to physically look at and study because of your life limitations or whatever. Okay, or maybe it's your your personality, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't diminish what I'm teaching you with these lower time frames, because all of these things repeat on the daily, the weekly, the monthly, the four hour to one hour. It, it depends on what you're looking for. What's the setup you're looking for? I've shown you multiple trades here. Every one of them is potentially profitable for you as a model. Any one of them could have been. Let's take a look at a five second chart. All right, so here's a five second chart. Okay. The market breaks down after going above that high, breaks down. Fair value gap. Sells off, sells off again. Institutional overflow entry drill here, and then sells off once more. What is this pattern here? Consolidation, rally, consolidation, rally, rally. Reversal, sell off, sell off, sell off, run. What is that? It's a market maker sell model. Original consolidation, accumulation, reaccumulation, smart money reversal, low risk sell, volume and balance. First stage distribution here. Second stage distribution, largest price swing begins from there. This is your unicorn. See that? It even gives you a bonus entry right here prior to taking out these lows. What does this low and this low have to do with each other? What does it not teach you? This low being higher than that one. That is a low resistance liquidity run signature. 
on a five second chart. So please, folks, please, I'm trying to be as respectful as I possibly can when I tell you it's annoying to me when I keep getting emails from folks that are saying, I need you to start teaching swing trading because I'm not going to be a day trader. The same things I'm teaching you here in these lower time frame charts is the same thing you're going to be looking for when you go into the higher time frame charts. I just don't have the time to do a lesson where, okay, we're going to look at the, the bond market daily chart and it's going to create this and that. And then it takes you five and a half months before that pattern even begins to set up something that's useful. Think about it. Like, would you wait for that? <laughs> I know I wouldn't wait for a setup like that. So if I'm giving you something that repeats over and over and over again on these lower time frames, it provides you a means to study, obviously, and see it working continuously, and then start looking for it to repeat in the same manner on all the other time frames that are higher than the ones we're using. Now, obviously, I'm showing you an extreme here with a five second chart. I'm by no means trying to imply that all of you should be trading the five second chart, but the traders that have been versed in understanding how to use the fractals and the market maker models on all the other time frames, if you know your bias and what it's going to reach for for liquidity purposes, then there's no reason why you can't use this time frame because I've already proven with executions, showing you where I got in, where I got out with the trading view, paper trading thing, I've used the 15 second chart and it's the same thing I'm looking at in my mind. If it was an hourly chart or a 15 minute time frame, it's the same thing. I'm looking for liquidity. I'm looking for what the market structure is doing. Is there been a break in market structure? Is it showing me a willingness to want to go higher or lower from a discount to a premium, vice versa? And I'm waiting for my pattern. I'm waiting for my particular setup that I'm looking for and then run to liquidity or an imbalance. It's that simple, folks. I mean, it feels like it's cherry picked and form fitted to the traders that are outside his mentorship because they don't know what the logic is around it. And that's why I'm trying to kind of incorporate that in this lesson, too, because I know some of you, uh, one gentleman in particular, keeps emailing me a lot because I'm still waiting on you know swing trading ideas, you know. Everything I'm teaching you is swing trading. It's just intraday swing trading. That's all it is. I mean, every time I'm entering a trade, it's a swing. I'm trying to capture a price swing. So what you're asking me is, Michael, I want you to teach what you don't personally do yourself. So my question is, is why would you want me? I mean, you don't see Tiger Woods out there trying to teach baseball. I'm teaching you what I'm good at. Intraday, day trading, short term. OK, uh, not daily chart swing trading where it's riding out for like a month or so, month and a half, two months. I, I, I don't have I don't have the patience for that. I've already taught you how to use the rules in the core content for that. So everything I'm teaching here in these lower time frames, just use the rules that I taught you when it comes to swing trading in the core content. Use all those things together, blend them together, the experience that you get for these lower time frames with the logic and the rules for swing trading in the core content lessons for swing trading on these higher time frame charts. That's all you need. And what's happening is because you're not studying these charts here, well, not specifically the seconds, you know, the five second or, or less than a minute charts, but these intraday charts, the reason why you're not feeling it or feel like you're not learning anything or that I'm not teaching you anything is you're not fully appreciating the fact that these lower time frames are the same functions of price delivery that's occurring on those higher time frames. Did I not pull out all of I mean, Yes, it's hindsight, but I'm trading them too, folks. I'm showing you examples. The things that I'm doing, those trades are based on this, what I'm teaching you right here. And they happen all day long, all day long. They're there, they're there, okay? What I'm filtering out is I wanna know is this likely to continue higher or continue lower for the morning session or the afternoon session? And I pick a liquidity pool I think is going to be targeted based on that logic. And I'm referring to what I think is going to happen for the daily range. OK, so since I know we're in the middle of the daily range, you know, PDRA matrix on both the NASDAQ and the S&P. Let's go back out to a, a daily chart and close the video. So between this high and this low, we're right in the middle still. Okay, so I'm not 
I'm not sold on the idea with a bias that it's going higher or lower. So what do I have to do? I have to trade the range. So my bias, if I'm going to consider it, which obviously I would, but in this case, I'd prefer a move lower. That's what I'd prefer. But if it gives me insight that shows me that it's going to run to a high, why would I ignore it? It's a setup. I'm trading intraday volatility, so I don't really need a bias, but I prefer to look for setups that runs old highs, break in structure, rebound to a order block, a fair value gap, institutional order flow, entry drill, or breaker. How hard is that? I just gave the whole idea to you to decide what you're going to trade on. Go back through the examples that I'm shown, and you'll see other PD arrays are there. Don't just look at it from the perspective I'm teaching from that YouTube channel. Think about what I'm teaching you here in the mentorship, because like I mentioned in video on Friday, I'm teaching the fair value gap with the internal range liquidity and external range liquidity for targeting. But you could just as easily, instead of a fair value gap, use the breakers, use mitigation blocks, institutional order flow entry drill, bearish order blocks, bullish order blocks, volume imbalances. Come on, folks. Just put a little bit of effort in thinking of how you can make that model yourself be more comfortable for you. I know some of you don't like the fair value gap, which drives me nuts because it's like, that's, to me, it's like magic. <laughs> it really goes right into the core of what's the market doing? And you literally, if you connect those fair value gaps, you know, across the whole spectrum of market structure, you're seeing the x-ray view of what the market's doing. That's the real support resistance idea that doesn't really exist in retail. Yes, there's all kinds of perfect examples in hindsight, but fair value gap is it's right there. It's staring you in the face and it's happening all the time. But until I taught it, nobody's really paying attention to it. But smart money is. That's one of those things that constantly overlapped with what I was looking at that I can't teach. So. You can't get mad at me and say, well, you're not teaching everything. I'm teaching you exactly how to find what I'm not allowed to teach you. There you go. Okay, that's my final answer in that. And if that doesn't scratch the itch, I'm sorry. But I am absolutely teaching you what works. I'm proving it. I'm trading it with a live account. I have other students in here that are doing it. And they're making money. And they're having their demo accounts grow up too. And they're winning funded account contests. And they're getting funded. So that's the evidence, folks. Okay. I don't need to be out here constantly throwing bones at you all day long. I don't need to do that. We're past all that. We're at that stage where you better be doing the work. You need to go into these charts and start looking for it. Because if you're at that point right now and you feel like you haven't been given enough to work with to make your own model, let me just be blunt. I don't need to do any price action model algorithmic theory. And you have more than enough to make dozens of models of your own. I am going to do it beginning in April. I'm going to finish out those algorithmic theories for each one of those price action models. I've done it for model one, but we'll begin in April with model two and I'll go through and I'll knock them out by the end of the year. You'll have all of it there. Okay. But you're going to see it's a lot of similarity across all of them which is what I'm trying to communicate to you. It's not like I'm reinventing something every time. It's the same thing you've been taught to the core content. It's just a way of taking out the things that you don't really necessarily need or distract yourself with. I mean, look what the reaction has been for, well, I guess you really can't see it, can you? <laughs> the, the reaction in the mentorship as a charter member, the feedback that folks that are um, posting in the user groups, every user group has at least two or three forum posts or threads and they're all commenting on how that model on youtube that i've given them brought so many things from this mentorship to clarity which is what i already knew was going to happen i already knew that that's why i told you in the beginning don't look at that model and discount it because if you study it it's going to help you pull all these loose ends together in this mentorship and for the critical thinkers in here that will be able to say okay well if i'm not using the fair value gap and I want to use a bearish breaker or a bullish breaker or if I want to use the order block there's your trade model that's it how many moving parts was there there isn't a lot of moving parts 
you're trying to do too much. And that's the problem, obviously, I understand. When I shoot all this information, like a fire hose, in your face for 12 months, and then you start thinking, man, like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do with all this stuff? You're supposed to go through the process of determining which PD array you like, which one makes sense to you. Whatever that is, that's the one you use. And replace fair value gap with that one. And use all the other logic the same way. <gasps> oh my goodness. You're telling me, I'm telling you exactly that. It's simple as that. I've been telling you this the whole time through this mentorship. But you keep getting distracted with the new content because I'm teaching you depth. There's depth to these markets. And if you don't understand that, you won't appreciate how fractal price is and how you can go in any time frame, any time frame. I'm going to have challenges for you on the other side of March where you have to only do analysis on one specific time frame. That's it. And you're going to be challenged. But those types of challenges are going to help you grow as a trader. It'll force perspective on the things that you've learned. And then also, for those individuals that want to be working on those higher time frame, four hour and daily charts, it'll be so much easier for you. And the whole community won't have to go through that long, arduous task of looking at long setups and short setups that take months to set up on a daily chart. It's just, that's an investor. I'm not an investor, okay? I'm a speculator. You know, I like to get in and trade. And that's great if that's what you want to do, but you've been taught how to do that. And all you have to do is take these lower time frame examples and scale it up. Look at your higher time frame charts, and it'll be just the same way as you see these lower time frames delivering. Same stuff. Where is the market likely to draw to? Higher or lower? Is it an old high or is it an old low? Is it going to be an imbalance or higher or low it's going to trade to? That's enough for you to be able to determine. Well, look at the chart right now. Right now, hard right edge, what do we have? The new candle starting right now, okay? So we have relative equal lows here. There's a pool of liquidity resting below that. So that's something that we could reach for near term. We have this weird high here. I don't trust that high. I just don't trust it, but I prefer to go lower. I'm thinking below these relative equal lows, there's something that we could trade for that. And look at this. So we have a low resistance liquidity run signature there. That's why I'm favoring the low end. So what's my bias? I'm bearish on NASDAQ. I'm bearish, okay? But I also have not canceled out the idea that it could still go up because we're inside of the equilibrium between this price high and this price low. So it can bang around in here indecisively and chop up traders with a lot of seek and destroy consolidation days where everything goes back to the middle of the range. You get these highs that get swept out and then it pulls right back to the middle of the range, intraday range. Okay. That's what you have to work with. That's it. It isn't going to be where, oh, it's going up and it's in a nice easy trend and I can see the double equal highs. It's going to reach for those or just a single high. It's going to reach for that or it's got a fair value gap it's going to reach up into or down into. Those, those days are easy. Those, those conditions are really, really easy. Your choice is going to have to be, do I trade in this environment? Or do I sit on my hands and wait until it starts to move and then pick out an obvious level where it's going to draw to? Because if you can't determine where it's going to obviously draw to, then you shouldn't be trading at all. Because the first question in that equation for profitable, consistent trading, where's price drawing to next? Not where do I get in at? That's what retail thinks. Give me an entry pattern. No. Let me teach you how to find out where the market's going to go to. Because if you don't have that, nothing else matters. The entry patterns are just going to get you in trouble. And that's not a new lesson. It sounds like a new lesson, but it's not. It's, I've been saying this ever since I've been teaching. But you have to come to some point in your development where you say, okay, I need to figure out what it is that I want to do. And guess what? It ain't easy. It's not easy to do that. Because you're always going to be wondering, is this the real one I should be working with? What if I have a better one that I'm just not looking at and I'm wasting my time with this one? You're not going to know until you start. I don't know which one's best for you. No one's going to be able to tell you which model is best for you. It's going to be the model that you design using the concepts and curriculum that I've given you. 
I told you this in the last video, and I'm going to say this in closing. Actually, I didn't say it in the video, did I? I said it in the forum. <laughs> I posted it in one of the user groups. I said that uh, one of the issues you're going to have is if you see me trading a model, okay? Like I could literally create a model every single month for the rest of my life, and it'll be absolutely unique from all the other ones prior. And that sounds insane, but it is true. If I trade that model and I show you the results, you're going to want to do that model. If I did a poll on all the user groups and I asked them as charter members, which price action model that is what I teach in the charter member area, which models do you like best? Without a doubt, model six and seven are going to be the ones that are, that's the one they love. Because in those teachings, I say, this is out of all the 12 models you're learning, these are the closest one to how I trade.